Hi, this is Crystal. Welcome to the last planning lesson before we go into access. At the heart of most databases is a need to keep track of contact information. I'm going to show you, step by step, how to design a contact management system that can be used on its own or slide into another application. For more great tutorials, visit our sponsor, everythingaccess.com. There are real people and artificial people. Real people are humans. Artificial people are companies or organizations. Both have need to keep track of the same kinds of data. The primary information is addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, and websites. The secondary information is notes, lists, events, and photos. Today we are going to plan the primary tables. Our people table needs to be flexible enough to accommodate humans and companies. The first thing we need is a place to keep track of the primary primary and secondary names. Name Pry will be the last name for a human or the company name for a company. Name Sec will be the first name for a human and, if applicable, the division or DBA or subsidiary for a company. The primary key of this table will be an auto number field called PID. To make the records easier to filter, we will include a category. The categories will be defined in a separate table. In the people table, we will store a long integer cat ID as a foreign key. Because we have humans and companies both stored in this table, we need a way to differentiate each record. So if an entity is human, we can prompt for additional human fields. Is human will be a yes no field. It will be yes if the record is a human. It will be no if the record is an artificial entity. If the record is a human entity, we will keep track of additional information. Middle name, salutations such as Mr., Ms., or Doctor, suffix such as junior or third, nickname, gender. Date of birth will be tracked in three numeric fields instead of one date field. Do you remember why we are going to do this? How many people do you know the month and day of a birthday, but not the year? By tracking this information in three fields, we can enter just what we know, and it can always be combined when we need an actual date. Cat ID is a foreign key in the people table. Cat ID is the primary key in the categories table. For each one category, such as friend, there can be many people. There is a one-to-many relationship between cat ID in the categories table to the cat ID in the people table. The phones table has an auto number primary key named phone ID. The PID field is a foreign key to people so we know who the number belongs to. We can use the type ID phone to determine what type of phone this is such as a home phone or a work number, a fax line or a cell phone. The phone field holds the actual phone number. In case there is an extension, we will have a phone X field. Phone note is for a short note. People can have more than one phone number, therefore a one-to-many relationship exists between people and phones. One phone type can be used for many phone records. The email table has an auto number primary key named email ID. The PID field is a foreign key to people, so we know who the email address belongs to. We can use the type ID email to specify a type, such as home, work, primary, or alternate. The email field is for the email address. Email note is for a short note. People can have more than one email address. There is a one-to-many relationship between people and email. There is also a one-to-many relationship between email types and email. The websites table has an auto number primary key named WebID. The PID field is a foreign key to people, so we know who the web address belongs to. Type ID Web specifies a type, such as personal, work, blog, or reference. The URL is for the web address. Web Note is for a short note. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. The URL is what displays in the address bar of a browser. People can have more than one website, so there is a one-to-many relationship between people and websites. There is also a one-to-many relationship between web types and websites. Now comes addresses. If you live in the United States of America, addresses are fairly standard. The same cannot be said for other parts of the world. Therefore, I will show you how to design a flexible structure. 
The addresses table has an auto number primary key named ADR ID. Type ID ADR specifies a type for the building, such as residence, business, or school. ADDR1 is the first address line. ADDR2 is for the second address line. The city will be stored in a field called city. ST is for the state or province abbreviation. The ZIP or postal code will be stored in ZIP. CTRY is for the standard two-character country abbreviation. Some of you have a two-part postal code, as do we here in the United States as well, but we do not normally think of it as two parts, and some people only know the first five digits of their ZIP code. It is handy to be able to filter by this, so we will add another field for the ZIP code extension and we'll call the second field ZIP2. Separating the extension also makes it easier to format the field in case the extension is missing. Some international addresses also do not show the two parts of the postal code together. Maybe there's one part before a city and one part after a city. Here is the revised structure showing ZIP as two fields. I've also added an area field that you can use to group addresses by a particular area or region. The problem with this structure is that it cannot accommodate all of the international addresses. This structure anticipates up to two address lines before the city, but that is not enough for everyone. In our example database, we will stick with two lines for now. For those of you who do need to track more, set up another table for address lines so there can be one, two, three, six, however many you want. The country field in the addresses table refers to the country code. Standard country codes can be found in my reference database. Click more info on the right for a link. There is a one-to-many relationship between countries and addresses. The ST field is the state abbreviation. Also in my reference database is a table with all the American, Canadian, and U.S. military states. Click more info on the right for a link. There is a one-to-many relationship between states and addresses. The reason country is also in addresses is because not everyone lives in the states. The state may not be specified, and we will also use this field for other reasons. There is a one-to-many relationship between address types and addresses. Did we miss something? There is no PID in the addresses table. How are we going to relate an address to a person? An address describes a location. People can have more than one address, and addresses can have more than one person. A many-to-many -many relationship exists between people and addresses. We need a cross-reference table or junction table to set this relationship properly. The junction table will be called PADR. There is a one-to-many relationship between people and PADR. There is a one-to-many relationship between addresses and PADR. The result is a many-to-many -many relationship between people and addresses. The way we use an address also has a type, such as billing, shipping, home, so we will add a types field to our PADR table. For each of our related tables, there is a type, and the types tables have the same structure, an auto number primary key, and a descriptive text field. Rather than creating five tables with the same structure, we are going to use a generic types table. Here is our generic types table structure. Type ID will be an auto number primary key. Type, without the E, is a text field. The reason we take the E off is because T-Y-P-E is a reserved word. Each of the tables in our system will be assigned a unique number. T-I-D stands for Table ID. T-I-D will be stored in types to provide a way to know which records correlate to other specific tables. Another thing we are going to do is preface each of the contact tables with C underscore. This will keep the contact tables grouped together by name in case you decide to incorporate them into a larger application. Here are the TIDs we will use for each table. 100 for people, 105 for addresses, 110 for phones, 115 for email addresses, 120 for websites. Each time we create a table, we will also create a TID for it. TIDs will also be used for another feature, Anywhere Notes. Once we get our main tables created, make some forms, and put some data in, we will discuss and set up Anywhere Notes. What's next? We will be going into Access to create tables, define fields and properties, drag relationships, and make sample records.